Hello everyone, it's Christine Stitch All The Things. Welcome to my channel today. Today is Wellness Wednesday Stitch with me. If you're new to this, um, I started this, this is my third Wellness Wednesday. And I just started this as a way to encourage other stitchers uh, and myself as we go on our health journey. <laughs> Um, to, to make healthier or different choices or just trying to get us in a healthier place. Whether what we're working on is our weight, uh, breaking a bad habit, trying to get new or healthier habits, um, whether that's exercise, drinking your water, taking your vitamins, or if it's just trying to be kinder to yourself um, and you're working on your internal voice. Uh, that was one of the assignments. Actually, I called it assignments. I want to change that to challenges because um, assignment one sounds way too much like work um, and something you have to do. Whereas a challenge is something that you you can say, yes, that fits me. That fits what I want to do. And I want to challenge myself in that area. So if you hear me say assignment, because that's just a word that pops in my head, no, it's challenge. I want to I want it to be a challenge. That way you can choose to participate in that particular challenge or not. The challenge two weeks ago was to try to work on our inner voice, the one that always seems to be critical um, and, and just try to be kinder to ourselves. Uh, in that vein, last, the last, the second video was in being kinder to ourselves and trying to change that internal voice, I gave the challenge, although I called it assignment, of standing in front of the mirror, bonus points if you could do it naked, and find something you like about yourself and then say that out loud to yourself. Uh, that's really difficult for us. Um, and I know a lot of people called that self-complimenting, which is what it really is. But the point there for me was to take Whenever I look in a mirror, I immediately start being critical uh, and I, my eyes immediately go to what I think and believe are all of my problem areas. And, and then I start in with that internal voice of being very unkind. And so I wanted to make that an exercise to where as we're working on changing our internal voice, that includes how we talk to ourselves when we see what we think we don't like in the mirror. And instead of having our eyes go always to the negative things we don't like, to try to um, have our eyes and our thoughts be drawn to the positive things about ourselves. Um, that's a difficult challenge for a lot of people, um, myself included. Um, I'll admit I skipped a few days where I just didn't feel like looking in the mirror or trying to find something that day uh, and then other days I it was easier and I was happy happier to have found something that I could say to myself that was positive um, so how's everyone doing how are you doing with the challenges is it really difficult for you um, were you able to do it at least once at least try it once if so I I'm really proud of you because these things are difficult. Changing our internal voice from a negative to a positive, that's really hard work. Um, just trying one of these things is can be changing, uh, can be life changing because once you try it once, then it's not so hard the next time. Um, but if you weren't able to do it, it's okay. Uh, not all of these challenges are, are going to be for everyone and that's okay. Um, how are you doing with your health goal, whatever that may be? Um, if you're focused on weight loss, this is the time of year where after you've um, made your New Year's resolutions or your goals for the year, I don't do resolutions, I'm a goal person. I feel like resolutions set me up to fail in my mind. Um, but this gets to be, we're a couple months in to, well, starting the second month. And when we're not seeing goal, our goals being met right away, or we're not seeing the number on the scale budge, or uh, we're not right, haven't jumped right into being able to change our habits yet, and it's still a struggle, that can be discouraging. But I don't want you to be discouraged. Um, here's the thing, this stuff, this takes time. 
there's no straight path between point A and point B. And I'll probably be saying these things on repeat. Um, I probably said this last week or even the week before. Um, oops, I shouldn't have been doing that that way. Um, I gotta fix this. But I say them often because I, I want it to sink in for you and for me. Our paths to get from where we where we are, where our point was, where we said, okay, I gotta make some changes to having made the changes and sticking with the changes. That is a long and windy road, y'all. And sometimes we go off the path a bit, explore other paths, if you will. Um, it's not straight. We have, uh, you can call them setbacks. Um, we have ups and downs on this path and that's okay. It's all part of the journey. It's not a quick journey. We don't get there right away, um, but it's happening. And here's the thing, even when you can't see the results, things are changing, things are happening. You may be um, changing your mindset, you're building habits, your internal organs are very happy if you're trying to lose weight. Um, maybe they're being able to process and do their job a little better. You can't see that in the number on the scale, but stuff's happening. You're working on building the habits. And while it may have been really hard at first, maybe now not so hard. So that if you've made a choice to, to maybe not be, um, and I'm just going to say not so healthy, uh, because that's different for everyone. For some people, it's food. For others, it's stopping a bad habit. Um, and still for others, maybe it's just uh, being kinder to yourself mentally. Um, all of our things that we're working on for our health, it's all different. Um, so maybe you made a choice one day to, to not do the healthy thing, whatever that may be. Um, for some of us, we look at that and go, I messed up. I screwed up. I failed. It's not failure. It's working towards changing how you how you act changing your choices changing how you think and that takes work and we don't all get to do it um easily and quickly and so don't look at it as though you messed up because i know my tendency is like for example i go out and i have a big meal and i splurge and i'm like oh well i screwed up i messed up this week big time so guess what? I'm going to go ahead and keep on splurging for the rest of the day. Or, well, I'm going to have a big dinner. I have to eat tomorrow. Might as well just keep on going. And then, and then you keep going until you can find the right time to get back on the healthy track. Here's the thing. The right time is this minute, this moment, right now. And you don't beat yourself up for the choice that you made to, to maybe go have a, a cookie you didn't plan on having or something, whatever it is, whatever, whatever the, the, and you know, you know what the healthy or better choice would have been for you in that moment and whatever it is you're working on. And you decided not today or not this moment. So it doesn't mean that you messed up for the whole rest of the week or the rest of the month and you don't have to try again when the time's right, the time's right right now. Just own your choice. No, you made a choice and that's okay. We all get to do that and you own it and then you get back to work, right? So even if you're not feeling like you're doing really great, you're still really doing great. You're thinking about what you need to do. You're thinking about your changes that you need to make and you're working on it. And that's the whole point. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not going to be perfect. We're not going to do it perfectly. It's okay. Now, I, I really want to focus on the fact that this is weight loss related. But if you're focused on the number and you're discouraged that your number is not changing, I want to tell you the number's not important. Now, I know that the last two weeks, my number was important to me. And that was specifically to get to a Weight Watchers uh, goal so that I could start working on a lifetime. 
So part of that was a motivational why thing for me. Um, and I'll talk about that towards the end, how, what the status is of that. So while I probably sounded a little too focused on the number, there, there was a legitimate reason. But you have to know that for me, it's not about the number. There's so much good things happening when you decide to, to eat healthier. Um, for some of us, it is about maybe losing a little bit of weight um, just so we can breathe easier, so we can fit into our clothes, so we can go exercise without feeling like I may have to go to the hospital after this. Um, it's, it's healthier and better on our organs, and we know that. And so maybe that's why we are focused on, on the number for a little bit. But in the end, the changes happening in your body, that's what's counting. It's not that number on the scale. We all know that muscle weighs more than fat, right? So if your number's going up, it doesn't necessarily mean your fat number's going up, right? Take your measurements along with your, your um, uh, once a week, once a month, twice a month, whatever. If you're feeling discouraged with the number, I guarantee you, if you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing, when you take your measurements, that's where you're gonna see the change. Um, it's just your body is, is building muscle. Um, it's getting rid of that fat. It's still doing, it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and you're just not seeing it on the scale, which is okay. Uh, you'll feel it in your clothes instead. Uh, the non-scale victories, I think, are, are way more important than what you see on the scale. Uh, your internal organs are processing things better. Um, uh, you may not see it or feel it there, or maybe you will feel it in your lungs, your heart. Maybe it's not beating as fast when you walk upstairs. Um, you could see it in your blood panels, uh, the blood work you go in when you go to the doctor. You see changes in your cholesterol levels, your sugar levels. These are all things that you are doing, you're accomplishing, and you can't see that in a number on the scale. So I don't want you to be discouraged. You're making healthy choices. You're doing great things for yourself, for your body. You need to be proud of that. Um, these are all fantastic things. They're all great things uh, that you're doing. And yeah, I know it's discouraging not to see it on the scale, but it's happening. You're building healthy, good habits. All these changes, all this work you're doing, it's for good. It's not for naught, if you will, um, even if you don't see it in the number. Um, I, I focus a lot on the internal Internal parts of this are our mental state of mind, um, are the choices we make. The reason why is the mister and I were talking about this and I told him that I had shared with you guys that I thought that like 50% of the, the battle was, was mental anyway. And he totally disagreed with me. He said, no, I think it's at least 99%. And he's a numbers dude, and he likes to be kind of accurate with his numbers. Of course, you can't really measure something like that. But he, I was thinking about that, and I thought, you know, he's right. All of the, I focus so much on the mental aspect, how we think, what we think, because that really is where the hard work takes place. I know it's hard work to go to the gym and exercise. I know it's hard work to choose to maybe have baked chicken over the bacon cheeseburger. Oh, you know how much I love my bacon cheeseburgers. Um, but the hard work comes not from the physical part. We're, humans are hard workers. You can just look around and see that. If someone needs help with anything, humans are, we humans are the first people. We will roll up our sleeves. We'll get down in the dirt, do the nitty gritty, whatever we have to do to get work done to help others, to, to do whatever needs to be done. The work comes from making that decision to do it. Um, once someone's made up their mind to do something, you can't stop them. They're gonna do it, right? Determination. That's what 
we're made of. We can do this stuff and we can put in the hard work, but the real work comes right in our minds. It's making the decision, making the choices, and it's hard. Why is it so hard with this kind of stuff? You think it'd be easy, right? Well, honestly, it's hard to want to choose to go out and maybe walk walk a mile and a half when that's the only time you have and really you'd rather spend it stitching, right? That's where the hard time comes in. The exercise stuff, that stuff gets boring. Choosing to have the salad, that gets boring. That gets old. That's why it's hard. We know what we should do that's healthy, that's right for us. But when we look at that as compared to what we want to do, what makes us maybe feel good or it gives us a little bit of extra enjoyment, that's why it's hard. That's why I focus on the mental part so much um, because that's where your work comes in. That's where you sit there and you weigh your choices. You weigh your options and you decide, yeah, I'm going to stick with healthy today or you know, I'm going to indulge a little bit. And then you get to decide, am I going to decide this is a choice where I get to indulge a little bit? Or is this choice going to make me say, eh, I messed up, forget it, forget the whole thing, and then fall back into bad habits. See, that's where the work is, in my opinion, in my mind. It's really, really tough work to... to co- to know and, and try to constantly make the right decisions when sometimes it's tiring to do that. It's hard. So when you're doing that, know you're really working hard. You're doing what's best for you, what's right for you, and you're accomplishing amazing things. You're not going to see it right away. It takes a long time to build these habits, make these choices, and then see results from them. So the fact that you're even thinking about it and making the choice is huge Uh, and you guys should be really proud of yourselves this is hard work hard hard work and and like I said I'm not saying it's not hard work to go out and run a mile or whatever that's all hard work too but you've gotten 99% of the way there just by making the decision you can go out and do the physical part totally Um, some of us have to limit our physical parts while we build up endurance or we have to be careful because we have some injuries that's all good and that's that's you being aware and treating your body nice those are good things i'm not saying that's not hard but i'm saying you've already won the battle the moment you make that decision in your head Um, so it's really important that you're kind to yourselves in your head as well that's why i'm really kind of harping on not beating yourself up when you decide to make a choice that, oops, maybe isn't exactly what you wanted to make when you think about it later. Just acknowledge, I made a choice. I did that. I chose it. But that was that moment. And this moment is now. And I'm going to make the the right choice, the healthy choice in this moment. You know what I mean? Okay. I actually wrote notes because I had a whole bunch of different thoughts. And I didn't, like, last... Last week, I had a whole bunch of different thoughts, and I didn't say half of them because I, I just, I just lost them in my head. You know, when you go to talk, and then they just kind of fly out. Okay, so there's a, a quote I've seen twice on the internet now. Once was a, a, a particular inspirational page on, on Facebook, and then someone else shared this from a different page on Facebook. And when I saw it the second time... It really struck me, and I thought um, I wanted to share this. It's it's hard to hear, though, um, because of how we are with ourselves, but I wanted to read it. I don't know who this quote is attributed to. I first saw it on the Facebook page, Word Porn, and then I saw it somewhere else, but I, I don't know that there was an attribution. Okay, so the quote says, The relationship you have with yourself is the most complicated one because you can't walk away from you. You have to forgive every mistake and deal with every flaw. You have to find a way to love you even when you are disgusted with you. And it really struck me because, um, I messed this whole thing up. 
because that's true. And that's why I, I really try to focus on being kind to ourselves with our words because we, we do have to reconcile our decisions with ourselves. Uh, we could be mad at ourselves for what we a decision we've made. We can feel disgusted. I, I don't want anybody to feel disgusted with themselves, but I, I'd be lying if I said there weren't times when I made a decision and was disgusted with that decision. But we are constantly having to work on ourselves, make choices for ourselves, and when we don't do things maybe exactly the way we should have, we have to make it right with ourselves. And so I really, as I'm finishing up this phrase, be kind, that's immediately what I thought of when I read that quote. We have to be kind to ourselves. Um, we can't, uh, we have to be kind to ourselves. I'm not gonna say what we can't do. Okay, so what are some tips if you are trying to make healthier decisions? Um, this is kind of weight loss focused, but honestly, I think any health habit that you, you've got going on, you could find some, something, some way to apply, maybe not these things, but tips to help you through some difficult moments. All right, so when weight loss focus here, um, when you see the scale isn't budging and, and your brain is stuck on, on the number, there are a few things I want you to think about. If you're really not feeling like you're making any progress and you don't know why, you're, you're choosing the salads and, and like Weight Watchers is designed to where you can, um, you can eat whatever you want, but you have to budget it within your points. So why aren't you seeing changes? Um, what are some things that you can do to maybe, maybe get some of that progress um, going? Here's a few tips I was thinking about. Well, one, I told you earlier, take your measurements because progress and changes are happening even if the scale doesn't tell you that they are. They are. Um, and even if you just take from that, I'm building healthy habits. I'm working towards this. It's long-term goals. You've already won this, the battle against the scale for that day, right? Um, remember that muscle is heavier than fat. So if you're out there, you're incorporating exercise along with your dietary changes, uh, know you're building muscle. So while you're getting rid of some of that fat, you're building up your muscle and that's heavier than your fat. So take that into account. Um, try taking certain foods out of your meals and see if that helps. Like I know for me, bread loves me. I can, I always, and, and I, I say this because it's not a lie, stay within my points for the week. Always. Uh, I have been religious about that. I mean, I, I wanted to meet this goal of, of losing the weight, getting to Weight Watchers Lifetime. So I am very aware of my points for the day and what I have to lose, what I have to eat, and I stay within those points. But there are weeks I don't lose anything. And so I have noticed that the weeks that I'm not losing any, anything are typically the weeks where I have rice, white rice, uh, because I like white rice. I know I can have brown rice. I know brown rice is healthier, but I choose white rice. Um, if I have it like two or three times, if I eat any sort of bread, uh, the, it likes to stick to me. It likes my body. Our bodies are different. They process things different. And so this is stuff to take into consideration. So maybe try taking out gluten and see if maybe gluten just loves you extra. Maybe try taking out process, all processed foods for a week or most processed foods for a week and see if maybe that helps. Um, an interesting thing I learned this week, uh, we have a, a lady in uh, a particular Facebook group. It's a local Facebook group for our local Weight Watchers meetings. Uh, her name is Ronnie, and every day she posts affirmations, and then she expands upon her affirmations. And what I learned in one of her affirmations, and I actually researched this because I just didn't want to say something that someone on the internet said without seeing if it's true. Um, so I'm going to put a link to, to an article down below, but alcohol intake. Now, I love me some alcohol. I'm not sitting here advocating that everybody needs to stop drinking alcohol. Don't think that from what I say. 
Uh, I will budget in alcohol. I tend not to drink it as anywhere near as much. I'm like a once every two weeks, maybe, kind of person now. And it's not because it's like, I think alcohol is terrible. Um, it's because I don't want to drink my points. <laughs> so I don't drink it as much. However, I could. I could budget it in every single day, a glass of wine or uh, a beer, anything like that. Um, you can work those into your points. That's what I've said I love about Weight Watchers. You can eat pretty much whatever you want, just budget it into your points. But did you know, and maybe you guys knew this, but I didn't do this, when you drink alcohol, your liver will prioritize metabolizing the alcohol over fats, over other, anything else, um, but mainly that's the point to take from that. When you drink alcohol, you've told your liver uh, you need to prioritize or you need to metabolize this and it, uh, and read the link below for like the actual, like a knowledgeable person's explanation of it, but it will, um, it will choose to metabolize your alcohol over your fat. And so that could be something. Maybe are you having a couple drinks a week and you're like, oh, why I'm still on my points? Why am I not losing weight? Maybe try taking out the alcohol for just a week or two or reducing your consumption a bit and see if that helps. Um, these are just tips on just trying to see different things, how your body works and, and uh, you know, if any of these changes might help with some of the weight loss if you've if you started to struggle and you're not you're not sure why um what i like to do is is i have found uh grapes i've talked about grapes before i love grapes grapes are perfect munchie for me find a good a healthy food that you like for those moments when you get uh, a craving and you're like i gotta eat something now I, and i'm hungry or whatever that is uh, if it's a particular fruit or vegetable or anything like that, is there um, uh, some nuts, maybe some almonds? Is there something that you enjoy snacking on that when that, when that moment hits and you're struggling to get through it, is there something you can go eat? Um, I'll post a recipe below. When I was first doing all of this, and I've talked about it before, my favorite thing was a Weight Watchers recipe for like a mock uh, cheesecake parfait. And basically you take a 32 ounce container of non-fat Greek yogurt and you mix it with sugar-free Jello cheesecake pudding. Uh, and if you're not a big person on sugar-free or um, sugar alternatives, then this is not a recipe for you. But you, um, you mix those up and then you cut up berries uh, usually strawberries but you can use whatever little berries you want and you make a parfait out of them if you divide that parfait into seven different containers the the yogurt and the fruit the fruit zero points if you're on uh, blue or purple uh, plans but um, the the whole thing ends up being zero points if you divide it into seven servings. If you divide it into six servings, it's one point. And so when everybody would be eating a dessert or I'd get a sweet tooth, um, I'd go for one of those because they were filling. The Greek yogurt's really good. Um, some great protein in there. They were filling and it just sort of help me get over that moment of everyone else is eating ice cream and I don't have anything to eat and I'm not going to eat a freaking apple while everyone's eating ice cream kind of thoughts. You know what I mean? Um, so just see if there's something that you can find that can help you get through some of those tougher moments. Um, uh, and, and if you're trying to do any other healthy habit, uh, maybe you're trying to um, stop smoking or uh, whatever, whatever, I, I don't have any good thoughts right now, other examples, but is there something else you can do to take your mind off of it? Um, try to find whatever that could be. I, we're miles ahead of the ball game of a lot of people because we're doing right now the one thing that can help take our minds off of food or whatever it is we want and it's stitching. Um, 
in the evenings uh, lately, I this whole week, I've been hungry. Like my, I just dropped my needle, excuse me. Well, I didn't find my needle, but um, I, so I had to go get a different one. Anyway, I, I've just been super hungry lately. So what I've been doing is um, I just make a cup of tea at night, nice hot cup of tea, and I drink that. And uh, that helps me, that helps me a lot too. Um, okay, so how did I do this week? Because since we're over 30 minutes into this, uh, I actually messed up my counting. Remember how upset I was about the whole thing of, um, I need to count where I am now. Uh, I only had so many weeks and I wasn't, I didn't make my, my weight goal. Turns out I miscounted. Uh, I came home to count exactly what I need to do. If there was a way I could, um, weigh in in South Carolina and still make my goal that one week. And that's when I realized you miscounted. You have seven weeks. So yeah, <laughs> I did really good in South Carolina. Um, the mister likes to get residence inns for rooms, uh, which I was really appreciative of because you have your own kitchen, your fridge, stove, everything. So we were able to go to the store and I was able to get um, the lunch meats and fruits I normally eat throughout the week. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do it this way. Sorry, I'm just thinking. And, and eat those for lunches. Um, we went out a couple times. Uh, I tried Raisin Cane's chicken once, but when I went there, I actually looked at all the points and realized I could have the kids meal version of this, which means I didn't get the garlic toast, which I'm fine with. Um, and, uh, and I stayed within my points for the day. Uh, we ended up going and taking Josh to, uh, out to uh, Cracker Barrel. He went to Cracker Barrel Barrel as his his uh, like graduation dinner. Why Cracker Barrel? I don't know. But said okay. I ended up going there and eating a meal worth three points. I th I think it was three points, M maybe five points at the most. Maybe five. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I want to say it was three. I got the catfish, the grilled catfish, and it was really good. Um, I'm doing this, uh, I'm not stitching this the way I normally would want to because I'm too busy talking. Um, and so I think the catfish was like one point for two fillets or maybe two points. And then for the sides, I chose um, pinto bean or yeah, they're pinto beans, which were zero points or one point maybe. And then I chose a side of their corn. I decided to splurge and the corn was three points. So maybe it was a five point meal. But I did good. Um, every morning for breakfast, uh, we got breakfast at the hotel. I would get um, their scrambled eggs. Not a huge fan, but zero points. And a yogurt and a fruit. And so I was able to, even on that long vacation, stick with my points and my plan. And so by the time we came back, I actually weighed in last week and made my goal. So this week was my first week at weighing um, in my maintenance period. And today I did, I literally maintained. Um, I didn't lose any weight this week. Um, it, it's a maintenance week. Although I am planning on losing a little bit more um, because we're gonna be going on vacation again really soon. A lot of them, and I told the mister, and he he's fine with this, he agreed it's not an unhealthy thought or anything before we go on each vacation I'm gonna lose about five or so pounds so that I can go enjoy myself and not worry about gaining weight so that I don't mess up my my weight goals with Weight Watchers so I can stay lifetime which for me simply means um, good support and it's free I'm a cheapskate so yeah I did really good with that um, really pleased with with um, the weekend with Josh and I didn't gain a lot um, and and then ended up miscounting and making my goal. If you're a Weight Watchers person, FYI, I didn't know this and I was really irritated, so I was trying to get this to where you could see it, that given my distress over the last week, 
when I was there that I, I wasn't going to make the six weeks and then I'd have to start weighing all over again when I went on vacation um, and start my six weeks over and she's like, it's fine, see if you can just weigh way somewhere in South Carolina and then you maybe still make your six weeks goal. The next week when I went in, she said, oh, by the way, you don't have to start the whole thing over again. You just have to weigh in six times after. So for example, say you weigh five weeks in a row and the sixth week you go over the, the weight you're supposed to, then and the next week you come in and you're back under, well, that counts as your sixth weigh in. I was like, woman, why did you not say that when I was so upset last week? Why couldn't you have just said that then? But it's all worked out. See, all that distress, all that stress for no good reason. Um, so that's, all, I'm on plan for that. And that ended up really well. Um, so yeah, happy about how, how uh, that I made goal. And um, that now I'm in the maintenance and working towards six more weeks, have to stay at 138 or less. Because my, my, their goal, I had to lose five pounds once I went to meetings. The five pounds was 136. But their goal, um, I can't go over 138. So that was a really nice accomplishment for me. I was really happy about that. But I will say that already I started to find myself... Um, doing a lot of uh, like, well, I made goal, I can go ahead and indulge. I did that a few times this week and then thought, this is the problem. This is my problem. And I knew it was going to start being a bit of an issue for me. I knew that would be my issue is once I hit maintenance, it would be like, oh, you've done so good. You can go ahead and have it, have the extra toast, have the extra whatever, which is why I maintained this week. I had bread three different times, all within points, all within my budget, but still bread three different times, rice once, and no weight loss, which is fine. I'm like, I've got six weeks to try to lose like four more pounds and, and, and then I'll be set for vacation to earn them all back. <laughs> um, yes, I know that's not a healthy thing, but uh, that's why I always tell the mister my thoughts and my plans, because if there's anyone who's reasonable with his thoughts about, oops, I didn't want to do that, about if I'm being unhealthy or ridiculous, he would tell me in a heartbeat. So, um, so it's all, it's all good. Okay, so before I leave you, I didn't really want to give you another assignment, um, assignment, challenge, uh, because because what you're working on is hard work and I, I want you to keep trying to do that I want you to keep trying at least once a week if you can't do it more than once a week um, look at yourself in the mirror tell yourself what you like about yourself um, I want you to be kinder with that voice inside your head but you guys have been working really hard you've been making some good changes and that's hard work and so I want you to treat yourself this week and I know it's hard. It's hard for us to want to do that. Um, not only that, it's hard for us to find time. So if you can find anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour at some point this week to just do something just for you, I don't care if it's take a bubble bath, which I, I hope you can sit there and soak in the tub for a whole hour. Um, if it's uh, starting a book and reading at least one chapter, whether it's a book you've been wanting to start for a long time or a book that you started and you just haven't had time to read it, um, whether it's journaling or praying or meditating, um, whether it's taking time to just paint your toenails or paint your fingernails, uh, if it's taking an extra 10 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour to, to do some stitching, uh, whatever you can do, just for you, if you can work that in this week, I would love that for you. Now, I know for some for some of us, it's really hard. Our schedules are busy. Um, you don't really have much time. I hope you can find 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. If you're a mom and you got a bunch of kids running around and you're like, I cannot take 10 minutes for me. I have to at least clean the bathroom or whatever. Listen, listen. When you put those kids down for a nap, Put those kids down for a nap, for one thing. 
give yourself 10 minutes and do not, do not go do housework. Do not, the housework's going to be there forever, for the rest of your life. And I, I'm serious. Like, you're going to be doing housework. You're going to be doing dishes, laundry. As long as those kids are around, you're going to have a messy house and you're going to be doing all that forever. You can take 10 minutes for yourself. Even if it's for you just to go to the bathroom without having 500 kids outside your door screaming for you um, to, because they love you and they, they have to be with you when you go to the bathroom, then they're done that. Just try to find a few minutes just for you, even if it's just to sit with silence. Have a cup of tea, have a coffee, make yourself a hot chocolate, do something just for you. That's the challenge this week. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up since it's a long one this week. Um, I hope you guys are finding these challenges not too difficult. I, I hope you are encouraging yourself and I want you to be proud of yourself. Just trying, just making the thought of, do, do I wanna change this? What can I do to change this? You're, you're already in the battle and you're already halfway there to winning. Um, so I just hope you feel encouraged and uplifted. Uh, I will see you on Sunday for my regular Stitchy update. And then I will see you in two Wednesdays from now, two weeks from now, because these are every other week for the next um, Wellness Wednesday Stitch with me. Uh, you guys take care, care, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you then. Bye.